Hey, so here I am with another Friday update. Um, nothing much happening really. I just got back from the range again from um, um, an action shooting. Uh, what's the word? Um, yeah, whatever. Action shooting session. Um, it was good. It was good. Didn't have to shoot. Didn't get to shoot a lot of rounds, but um, it was the first time I took my brand new Glock 23 to the action shooting event and it performed okay although I do have a concern a lot of people are reporting with Gen 4 uh, Glocks in particular Glock 23's and Glock 19's um, uh, strange ejection patterns um, whereas my Springfield XD40 ejects uh, very consistently to the right and back of me and a distance of about maybe 8 to 10 feet consistently. Glock has been sort of erratic uh, with its ejection, although uh, when I'm shooting in the port at a range it's hard to tell uh, why the rounds landed where they landed because sometimes they deflect off of the sides of the port. So, um, and a couple times actually, the last time I took the Glock to the range uh, I put about two to 200 to 250 rounds through it. A couple of rounds actually hit me in the head right here. Uh, not the rounds obviously, the, um, the uh, brass. Uh, the spent shells, and uh, yeah, I was concerned with that because I'd, I'd read some stories of uh, people having similar problems. Anyway, so I was waiting for something like that to happen today. This one time I was shooting through a barricade, um, a simulated uh, window, and a shell did hit me on the head, but I, again, I wasn't sure whether that was a deflection off of the structure or it came straight from the ejection port um, and then we were shooting another stage and uh, it was just you know open space so you know it was quick quickly shooting at a series of targets and one shell um, hit me right here so I know that I have an ejection problem on the Glock I'm gonna call the uh, the gunsmith at the shop that I bought it at and talk to them first anyway if you have any uh, and this is by the way this is not a recoil spring assembly problem if, if for those of you guys who are, you know know the problems with Gen 4s, Gen 4 Glocks, this is definitely not the RSA, the recoil spring assembly problem. I checked the serial number. My serial number uh, means that my RSA has been manufactured after the problem that caused the recall. So it's not the RSA. It may be the ejector, bent piece of metal uh, inside the gun that. Uh, you know, the uh, as the slide is moving forward, uh, moving backwards with the force of the recoil, the brass uh, moves with it, and when it hits the ejector, the ejector pushes it out of the ejection port. So it's supposed to go to your right, maybe back, um, but this one hit me in the head. Problem that I have to deal with. That. Anyway, for those of you who are not interested in firearms. Uh, too bad, I just wasted three, wasted three and a half minutes of your time. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, I've been uh, I've been trying to lose some weight. Um, so I've been trying this diet that a friend of mine actually used and helped her a great deal. Uh, even though she you know, she didn't look like she would have too much extra weight to lose, but she was able to lose like 13 pounds. Uh, again, I don't know where she lost it off of exactly. Um, but anyway, she, you know, I believe her when she says that she lost 13 pounds. So for the last, what has been two weeks? Yeah, I've been on this diet. I actually lost about four and a half, five pounds, uh, which for me means breaking a plateau that I had reached um, a while ago. I actually used to be a lot bigger, um, and I, I have pictures to prove it. In fact, I should do like a before and after picture. So I have some pictures from like 2005 that would really be good for the before part. Uh, also 2006, I was really much bigger. Um, I weigh 181 now. I used to be 228. So we're talking about and my lowest point. I actually I actually lost a lot of weight and then gained some of it back. And I'm I'm fighting very hard right now to lose it back again, and possibly go even lower uh, than my lowest point. Um, so my lowest point point was 179 anyway uh, um, in addition to the diet and the diet is you know it's a 
Um, it's I guess it's a variant of low carb, but this time it's low carb, low fat. So it's high protein, low carb, low fat kind of diet. I I understand I you know theoretically why it would work. That's why I was willing to try it. I really really want to lose those few last pounds. Um, so yeah, in addition to that, since January first is one of my New Year's resolutions, I've been working out. And I've been doing this uh, kettlebell routine that I I, I I picked up on the internet. I you know I, I was aware of a kettlebell as a great way to uh, get into shape, and I got myself a 35, 35 pound kettlebell. And I'm doing every day. I do like an eleven minute routine that's really intense, high intensity. Um, it, it combines kettlebell with uh, interval training. So I'm doing uh, uh, Tabata intervals where I I, I do. Um, an exercise for 20 seconds with very high intensity, then I rest for 10 seconds, and so it goes. So I do six minutes of that uh, with a kettlebell, then I give myself a rest of 30 seconds, then I do another three minutes of that. Um, and by that time, I'm really exhausted, and my heart's pumping, and my breathing is, you know, very fast, and I'm all, I'm I'm drenched in sweat all over. Um, and that, so I do six minutes, 30 minutes break, six mi uh, three minutes, 30 minutes break, and then another last minute, last last push comes out to 11 seconds so at the, at, at the end of that my my heart rate is like 165 and um, I'm completely you know covered in sweat all over so it really gets your metabolism going for a while <laughs> so uh, um, there's a theory that uh, high intensity resistance training uh, is more effective uh, as a way to lose weight than low intensity um, and long duration cardio like walking or running Running could be high intensity, you know. I grant you that. So uh, for the last two weeks, though, in addition to the uh, to the schedule routine that I do pretty much every day, I also started walking, you know, fast walking for 45 minutes to an hour every morning. I think that's helping too. So I'm really, really pleased with myself. I'm in much better shape now. I actually, I discovered I actually have abs. <laughs> I I don't remember ever seeing my abs. Um, but now they're they're actually, you know, they they they're there. Okay, there's a lot more to lose that sits on top of the abs, but they're there. I'm so like I said, yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of pleased with myself for that. I uh, and I may do the before and after pictures. Um, anyways, I have a few videos on my mind that I wanted to make. Um, I had a conversation with my brother-in-law. He lives in Australia. Um, I, I had a conversation with him this morning, this this afternoon on Skype. Um, he's talk, He's a libertarian. He is sort of getting educated. Um, so he's, I think, emotionally he's a libertarian, but uh, um, like from the standpoint of education and intellectual foundation, it's, it's not quite built yet. So, but he's working on it. So, you know, I'm, I'm I'm happy to help if I can. We had an interesting conversation. He's trying to convince a guy at work, who is a member of the Australian Pirate Party. Uh, they are for copyright and patent reform. They're not for a complete abolition of it, but they're for like loosening up of the uh, patent restrictions and stuff, which, which I guess is a you know good step in the right direction. Whatever. Um, but anyway, um, so the guy's aware that uh, my brother-in-law is libertarian, and he keeps challenging him on like libertarian positions, free market stuff, like what about monopolies? And, you know, would monopolies take over a libertarian economy with no zero government intervention? Blah blah blah. And my brother-in-law didn't quite know how to respond to these things like on the fly, like this. Um, he had good arguments, but they weren't quite developed and quite, you know, you know, properly structured or something. So they they weren't getting through. And we had an interesting conversation, and I wanted to maybe sum sum up uh, some of those things that we talked about in a relatively brief video. Uh, let's see, what else was I thinking about? Hmm. Shit, my memory's failing me now. Anyway, it's going to come back in a second. So yeah, um, as always, if you guys are interested... Oh, oh here, here's one thing I've been thinking about. So I know that some of my subscribers are hardcore libertarians, quite educated on economics and, and history and political philosophy. Although others uh, may be curious, but uh, may not be as knowledgeable. And so it's difficult for me to tailor... Like, if I, if I think about who's going to be watching these videos... Um, I know that there's at least 
two distinct groups of people in terms of their education, in terms of the level of knowledge that they have about the issues that are of interest to me. So sometimes I wonder whether I should really sort of save these videos for really complex, controversial, libertarian, you know, hardcore, deep libertarian stuff, or, you know, sometimes maybe I should do like a, a high-level uh, economics video or something. So if you guys have any preference, anything at all, feel free to let me know via a personal message or a comment or something. Um, because, some, you know, it's difficult to gauge what the people you, you're making these for. It's difficult to gauge what you guys know or what you guys, you know, would be interested in learning more about. Um, you know, uh, 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 I'm, I've been reading a lot in, in the last three years and I've been sort of thinking a lot, uh, working out my system of views on the world. Uh, most of it has been economic and historic, uh, economics and history. Um, so I know what I know. I know what I believe and why I believe it, but uh, again, you know, I, I can't read people's minds. I guess I should just follow a friend's advice and just do whatever I want, <laughs> make a video whenever I feel like it, whatever I feel like making a video about or something. But again, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, if, if you have any, you know, topics that are of particular interest to you, I'm, I'm more than happy to help explore them together, so to speak. So yeah, there you go. Talk to you guys soon.